In this video, we're going to focus on how to create two arbitrary lines in Chart.js here. So we have one lower one, which would be the red line, and we have an upper one here, which is the green line. So let's explore how to do this. In this video, we'll focus on how to create two arbitrary lines. And this came from one of the viewers' questions, which was on one of my other YouTube videos about how to create a horizontal arbitrary line in Chart.js. So if we go in here and then here down, you can see here, Fur asks us the following question, and a special thank you to Fur. Is there a way to add multiple lines without repeating the plugin code with different IDs? Yes, there is. I'm going to show exactly how. All right, so let's start with that. So the first thing what I want to do here is I want to get the default code, and I highly recommend you to go to chartjs3.com slash it and then getting started. And in here, I have a video explaining the default code, but I will just grab the code and paste that in there. Watch the video if you need to understand what I did there. So I'm going to paste this in here. And once I paste it in here, I'm going to cut this out. I'm going to paste that title in there. There you are. And now I will save this. And once I save this, I have this nice chart here. I'm going to convert the chart into a line chart and I will remove these colors. I'll make one single color only. So we go in here and we're going to change this to a line chart. I'm going to remove all of the colors except for the red color. So it's just easy to read. It's just a one single line. And then next what I will do once I did this in the background color as well. All right. Comma here. Make sure you have a comma there border width i will remove this i'll just say tension and here will be 0 0.4 all right once i did this refresh you can see now we have this nice chart with this tension line meaning that they're becoming more elastic if there was no tension you will see it's just like a straight line here all right so now we have this here so let's start to focus on the most important part now we'll go quite quick through this if you want to understand it I will recommend you to check this specific video where I go very deep in every detail of it in this one I will not because the other video here covers for 30 minutes everything what you need to know so what we're going to do here basically we need to create a plugin here to create a plugin we're going to make a plugin block basically a block and we can call this well let's give it first a uh, let's activate the plugin here first so we make sure that there is a plugin so what we're going to do here in the options just after the options here you can see this is the options part so if I close this it's afterwards here here we're going to say the following we put in here plugins and then we say here bracket to activate the plugin and we can call this because we have two arbitrary lines let's call this a double arbitrary line uh, our arbitrary line all right there we are so let's put this back here press on that all right so now we have this one here this will activate it and this is very important because this line here will be eventually the constant value here so we have here the constant and this constant we can put in here uh, that and then equals this so this constant equals a few items here first of all we need to get the id and the id is of course the id name which is exactly the same here i'm doing this on purpose so this this and this here below is very consistent very important to know comma so once we did this we have to uh use a item because we're going to draw something in the chart but we're going to do that before draw so this is a callback function here it's called before draw so we're going to draw something before anything else has been drawn in here and the reason why is we want to make sure that these lines are on top of the arbitrary line so if there will be an arbitrary line from left to right it shouldn't over or overlap this it should be at the very back of it and this is like a layer on top of it very important so we say this here and then we put in here the values chart comma arcs comma options all right so in here you're going to put in another constant and this constant will contain the following value ctx ctx is very important 
the chart area, which is essential here for our drawing, because the CT Act will refer to everything in the chart. The chart area will be eventually this specific chart area that we're going to focus on, not on the canvas, because the canvas itself is bigger than the chart area. Let me show you. As you can see here, this is the canvas, but the chart area is the gray lines within the four boxes here outside of this white space. Or sorry, within, inside the white space here, this part. All right. Later on, I'll go a little bit more showing you some samples so you understand that. All right. So once we have this, we want to pinpoint, or we want to extract these objects in here. We say a top, right, and we say bottom, left width and height and these are all related to the chart area we're going to figure out what is the top position of the the top position in pixel amount to be clear of the chart area the right position the bottom left etc etc all right next what we have to do here is come on and we're going to get the scales because the scales is the one we're going to use we're going to create the two lines directly based on the scales we have for example a uh, while well, we have here the danger line and we have the success line when we hit targets or when we are below target. So we have the scales and the scales will be the X value and the Y value in here. So once we did that, we say this equals chart. So this here is basically what we call object destructuring and renaming different objects. So now we have that here. What we want to do now is ctx.save all right so i had a question from someone what is ctx well ctx contains everything in here just to be sure i want to show you this so i say here dot ctx all right so if i save this now and refresh oh, let's see if we have everything working uh illegal property declaration fair enough that's this one here let's see we have here a dot i realize that dot should not be here it should be a comma Save, refresh, there we are. All right, so this is the CTX console log, basically consisting everything of the canvas itself. You can see here everything. We don't even need this, but all of these default here, directions, fill style, color, fonts, etc., etc. Here, so if you want to add something in here with the CTX, that's the one we're going to work with to adjust colors and set colors. All right, now we have this. Now what I want to do is I want to make a line here. The line will be based on all of these values here, and uh, it has four specific values. So let's type it in, ctx.stroke style. I'm using stroke here, and the term stroke here is related to the canvas. Think about a canvas as a painting, or like a blank canvas, a blank uh, uh, sheet of, I will, uh, I, I, just a canvas, I guess, that's probably the right term. So it's just a blank canvas, meaning that it's like a square picture that's blank where you can start painting. So that's why they called a uh, stroke here, because a brush with your stroke is a, considered a line. So in that same context of canvas, painting, and paint brushes, they're using strokes, etc., etc. All right, so you get that point now. What we want to do here is the following. We want to give it a color. So we're going to create a line here. But the, the line needs to contain a color, so let's give this a color of green for now, comma. And then what we want to do here now is to position that specific stroke line. So we say here stroke rec for rectangular. So this is very important, the stroke rectangular. Oh, make sure that these are parentheses. The stroke rectangular works with four values, the x0, the y0, the um, x1, and y1. All right. So basically in here, what this would mean is the following. This is the starting point, and I already discussed in the other video, so I highly recommend you to check that one, but I will be going very quick on this one. Here, this is the uh, starting point. The starting point on, sorry, this is the starting point on the horizontal level from left to right this is the starting point on the vertical level from top to bottom and then we have the ending point from left to right so basically this will be the starting point here and then that will be maybe somewhere here if ever we put in a point or value in here and this is the 
ending point on a vert vertical level that's from top and then ending somewhere below all right very important to understand this so now we have this and now you have the understanding of this i will go very quick through this and as I, I will repeat one more time check out this video for the explanation so what we're going to do is this we're going to get a, a starting point which would be the left the left here refers to this starting point here not even at the canvas the canvas here the canvas tag you can see starts here but i don't want the canvas there what i really want is i want the starting point of the chart area which is these four lines here so that's what i'm going to do so i say here top of the left sorry we have this one here here if we have for example two lines here one one upper line would be like the success line and the lower line will be the uh, danger line because maybe we are making two less sales and here we have we hit target and we have a successful sale day so we need to get here the connection of the scales here so then we have here basically these scales here which refers to the y so i'm going to grab here the y and dot get pixel for value and this here i will show you right now let's get a very high value here let's put it on somewhere here remember it works here with the pixel for value on the y scale meaning this is zero is also index zero and then here one that's one two etc etc so let's put it on number 10 then we get probably this point here let's see that so value of 10 just to make sure and that will be the it is a starting point so it will start at the left we expect it to be here and it might it might be a pixel or somewhere else we will just check later on but i expect that part there so next what we want to do is the width of it sorry the we want to make sure that the line from left to right so we want to get the entire width of it you might say you want to get the right side but no we don't get the right side because the right side would indicate some specific point here but that will create an issue all right so you have to get here the width and the width is basically the width of left to right minus all these spaces here all right so i will not go deep in there check out the other video once we have that one, here the position movement output is on zero because I don't want to move it vertically anywhere. I want to be on the same position, the same line here. Save this. Refresh. Now you can see here number 10 is just, it's pinpointing number 10 and we have this here. Beautiful. All right. So here we have like now our success line. We can even change this to 12 to go to higher. We expect that sales target should be 12. There we are. So you can see this works nicely. So now what we want to do is we want to create the other line. To do the other line, what we need to do here first is put in a CTX restore. And the reason why we want to restore, uh, restore, sorry, that's the right term, is I want to reset this specific value here. The reason I want to reset this is I don't want to grab this to go in my next line. And all we have to do here basically is same structure. I'm going to copy this, put it in here, Let's make this red and this I will just give this in term and later on we're going to give this the options we're going to connect them so we say here this will be the success or target hit line and then we have here the danger or target failed to hit line I guess all right so we make this red we can put this here we reposition this let's put it down here so the moment we are hitting only four sales or let's say five sales we are below uh target so we put in here five to save this there we are all right so there we are and that's basically a way to do it what i want to do now is i want to create an option in, in here and this option let's close this here so what we want to do is an option here that we eventually can give this not a uh, value that we have here but we want to have that soft coded same as the colors let's create a soft coded color to do this we go in here and we're going to put in here a plugin so we are in the options we say comma here make sure that this all right then we say here again plugins remember this one here activates the plugin but this one here refers to the plugin values and does what needs to be done or connects that with controls because if you have this kind of plugin here basically this is when you, you create your plugin this might not be accessible sometimes if you have a plugin you use from ChartJS, this is not accessible for you so you just only add like these javascript library plugin but 
and uh, maybe you want to pinpoint something specifically just like what we did here so we're going to do this right now so we say here plugins and then we're going to grab the name and the name is exactly the same be as consistent as possible all right and now let's give this a name here let's call this here the success line right so we call this the success line so we say here options what we're really doing here now is referring that this value is not cannot be found here but will be found in the options dot uh, let's give this a proper name. What would be the nice name is like success line color. I guess that's a, probably the best term we can use. We have here the success line color. So to put in here, so the success line color equals and here the user could put in their value green. All right. So now we can do this. And well, let let me change this by making this blue. Save this, refresh, and let's see if we have. Oh, all right. So we get an error. Fair enough. Let's see what's going on here. So we have here options, uh, options color. There you are. This is my issue here. Sorry about that. Semicolon. That should be it. And apparently there's some more. Let's look what's going on. The unexpected token on 95. 95. All right. We have here the. Uh, all right. This makes sense. Sorry. Don't do this. Don't put it in here options. The options was only for here, referring that it will go in the options here, searching for the specific plugin, which it activates, and then it looks for this. Of course, we should not do this because basically this is like you're chaining on the object itself, and it doesn't recognize because there's no options that success line color. But there's a success line color here, and this should work. All right, so this works nicely here. Now what we can do here, we can make this green, and you should see now here that this is now green. Nice. All right, I'm going to remove this console log here just to reduce the amount of data there. That's it. Final item. What I want to do is the, not the success, but let's call this the danger or the failure line color. This should be red. We can make this orange just for the sake of it to see if it works. All right, so I'm going to copy this. I'm going to say here, I'm going to remove this. I say, the following or I state here basically that the uh, the danger line color is found in the object options dot danger line color semicolon save refresh now it's orange beautiful all right what we could do here is final item soft coat this one here and let's soft coat this so let's I put this on red we're going to soft coat this so how do we soft coat this exactly the same what we did here so basically we can just grab this here we could say here would be, uh, oh, sorry, we cannot do it like that, but we can say here, it's two options here. We can say ctx dot, uh, uh, or basically this is just value. We can just give it a value. doesn't matter so much, I realize. But what we can do here, maybe this would be just fine. We just say options, then say line color line value. I'm going to grab this. Then we're going to put it in here, remove the options here. We can say here, and the value would be 12, for example. It was 12, if I'm not mistaken. So let's save that. Well, let's put this on 7 to see if we have a working model. There we are. It works nicely. So now we do the same. Uh, we can do the exact same. Put it in here. And then we have uh, the danger line value. Let's copy that. And the danger line value would be number five. This is number 12. Save that. Uh, let's see, comma here. Make sure you have a comma here. Save, refresh, and there we are. So this is basically how you can create a line here or basically two arbitrary lines based on certain things. And this helps you for another way of creating your data. So if ever, I will repeat, if ever you still struggle with the understanding of this, I highly recommend you to watch this video here. Oh, sorry, not that. How to create a horizontal arbitrary line in Chart.js. Make sure you watch this one because this understanding here goes very deep, explains it from step by step. I'll put the link in here on the page. It will pop up right now. So you have that as well to understand deeply what it does.